Corey Ten Boom had a little poem that she used to recite on occasion about worry. She said, Worry is an old man with bended head carrying a load of feathers which he thinks are lead. <laughs> and she captured the concept of worry very, very beautifully in those little lines because worry is about something that isn't. It's about something that we fear will be. It, it is not God's will for you to live life out of worry. It is not God's will for you to live life out of stress. It doesn't take much to cause you to be tempted to worry. Just turn the television on. He says, I tell you, don't worry about everyday life. Now, there's a reason why you don't have to worry about everyday life. It's because God's got you. So I don't have to worry because God's got me. And when worry knocks on the door, you remind yourself, God's got me. 1 Peter 5 and 7. He says, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. How many of you this past week, you were confronted with some cares of life? Now here's the most important question. How many of you still have those cares? A man that will cast his care on the Lord is a humble man. The guy that doesn't cast his care is a prideful man. It makes it real difficult for you to receive from God when you have decided that you're going to do this on your own. To not cast your care means I don't believe that he can do no more about it than I can, so I'm going to keep it. To cast your care means I trust and believe God and I'm going to rely confidently on him and lean on him, so I'm through. I'm casting this over on the Lord. Praise God. God, you got it. And, and, and that's really difficult for people to do because it's, it's asking you to trust in the promise that he made to you. It's difficult to do that sometimes. God is saying, cast the care. You're saying, no. I might not be able to do nothing about it, but at least I can just worry. Number one reason that people are sick today is not because they eat a hamburger. It's because they're stressed out. But you don't know how to let stuff go. He is saying, give me an opportunity. Lean on me. Rely on me. Cast this over on me. I see where you're weak, but that's when I'm strong. I see what you're going through, but that's where my grace can be sufficient. Try me, the Lord says, and you will love it once you see what I can do. Because God's already, God's already got provisions for the stuff you holding on to. Let that stuff go and say, God, I, I, I got to trust you. I mean, listen, some, some of us don't have no choice but to trust God. I think the biggest enemy we have in life are options. All right. You think you have all these options and you think, well, I'm going to choose option A, it don't work. Option B, it don't work. Option C, it don't work. Well, then, at least there's still God. Now, he should have been first. <laughs> Someone has said, worry is faith in the negative, trust in the unpleasant, assurance of disaster, belief in defeat. Worry is wasting today's time to clutter up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. But worry itself is always concern over the future. Worry is concern about something that we can do nothing about and that we cannot even be sure about. One who worries looks off into the future but the problem with the person who does that is twofold. First of all, the future is not here. And secondly, the future is not his. There is nothing to lay a hand on. There is nothing that can be done. And so the anxious worrier cannot control it. He does not even know what it will look like. No one but God knows its true shape. If we're not careful, we allow uh, what's happening to play out to the worst possible scenario and all of a sudden, we're filled with anxiety. If you'd like to have the teaching of Jesus on the subject of worry summarized in two words, here it is. Don't worry. That's Jesus' message to us. Don't worry. Don't let tomorrow's possible problems tear you apart today. Researcher Lucas Lafreniere, a PhD, said, this is what breaks my heart about worry. It makes you miserable in the present moment 
to try and prevent misery in the future. For chronic worriers, this process leads them to be continually distressed all their lives in order to avoid later events that never happen. Worry sucks the joy out of the here and now. You might be thinking like this, well, yeah, I know God can take care of me. I mean, he's able to take care of me. I believe that, but but here's my question. Will he take care of me? I know he can, but will he? Worry is fear-based. Worry is based in fear. There's something I'm, I'm afraid of. I'm anxious about something, not too sure about something. It's fear-based. You know, the number one fear that Satan wants to put on Christian people who are believing like this, he wants you to be afraid that what he promised you won't come to pass. So when you read the scripture and you see it's the finished works of Jesus, then the enemy's coming to your mind and say, what if that's not true? What if that doesn't come to pass? That's the number one fear of the devil. The number one fear of the devil towards Christian people is to be afraid that what God promised won't happen. So worry is fear-based. Worry is fear-based. It comes as a result of you saying, well, you know, I want to believe, but I really don't believe. And you can tell it because you're not at rest. You can tell it because you're worried, you're still stressed out, you're still trying to work to try to make this thing happen, and we've not learned how to enter into that rest. There still remaineth a rest, and we're not entering into that rest. You've not entered into the confidence and the peace of knowing that it's already done and it's already finished because you just don't believe it. And when you just don't believe it, you're in fear. That's the fear. That's the fear that Satan wants to put on every believer. And when you tolerate fear, you contaminate your faith. Which of you by worrying can add one day or one minute to your life? And the answer is no one can do that. No one, no one can add a moment to his life by worrying. That's not possible. But the question has been worded, which of you can subtract? If we ask that, then you could answer that very positively. Because I know, and you know, people who have subtracted from their life because of their worry. Which of you by being anxious can add? Nobody. Which of you by being anxious can subtract? Everybody. Just make sure you don't allow the enemy to sow so much anxiety in your life that it keeps you from doing what God has called you to do. So worry is inconsistent. Worry is irrational, it's ineffective, and it's illogical. When you're tempted to worry, you need to stop and ask this question, who am I anyway? Am I a child of God or am I an unbeliever? In other words, when you worry about the things that might happen to you, you're functioning like someone who doesn't have a family or a father. You're acting like an orphan. But you have a father, and your father loves you, and he will care for you, and he knows that you have needs, and he plans to fulfill them. Concentrate your energies on living one day at a time. Listen to what it says in verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things.